time for 30 minutes on the recumbent bike in Planet Fitness. Now, of course, I'm not going to clip it. I mean, it's, it's just sitting on the fucking bike. But I don't know, man. Come on. I really just can't. I, I'm not a cardio skipping sympathizer. And I think I've made that clear. I just, dude, you're just missing out on gains, man. You can eat more food because you're going to have a better metabolism. You'll be able to train harder because you won't get so winded. Just in general, man, you're going to feel better. You know? I just, and it, Arnold didn't do cardio. Uh, oh, why am I forgetting his name now? Uh, Arnold, man. What the fuck? How the fuck am I forgetting that guy's name? Arnold and Columbo. What the hell is his first name? I cannot remember. Oh my god. Oh, whatever. Arnold into cardio. I don't have. Okay. Are you Arnold? <laughs> if you are, then holy shit. What's up, man? I can't believe you're watching. No. No, you are not fucking Arnold. Alright. Don't, uh, uh. I mean, there's just so many scapegoat excuses about it. Oh, well, if I burn 300 calories of cardio, then I'm going to have to eat like 300 more calories to make up for it. You're going to be hungry for that extra 300 calories, man. Just by way of burning energy, expending energy, your body then has a need to replenish it. And you know, it's honestly going to want to replenish it in excess. So for me to do my cardio, it's going to allow me to have an easier time taking down, you know, four or five thousand calories. If I didn't do any cardio, I'd say, well, I could say with certainty, because there's been periods of times on bulks when I was skipping my cardio, it gets harder to eat, man. So if that's, uh, if getting your food down is a problem for you and you're not doing your cardio, maybe you're just kind of crashing your metabolism unnecessarily. But, uh, I won't... I won't rip into you too hard about that. Let's just break down what this uh, chest day is going to be. So, my gyms are closed. My access to weight equipment is now limited to what I've got in the basement. Barbell rack, about 300-something pounds of weight. A uh, adjustable bench and dumbbells up to about... Hmm... <sighs> Yeah. Up to about 65. So in terms of my exercise selection, I mean, I know for a fact I'm going to start off with incline bench. But apart from that, I really just have to see how I feel. You know, after a couple of sets of incline bench, maybe I'll do some standing dumbbell sort of like cross body flies. Maybe I'll do some cable presses with my one arm little cable attachment. That's, you know, I'll really just have to see in the moment. But even though I'm limited in terms of my exercise selection and my weights or whatever, I'm still going to have a sick pump. If you're, uh, you know, I've made this statement before, right? a bad craftsman is going to blame his tools for why his work isn't good. If I were to just lift in this basement for, you know, perpetuity, I will say, potentially, my legs could suffer. Uh, my leg training would not be ideal just because I wouldn't be able to do hamstring curls and leg extensions, which I do give a lot of credit for in my leg development. But I'd still be able to bust out some squats and RDLs. So if I was really limited to just down here, I'd still be able to get a good leg pump too. But in that instance, I'm probably not gonna transition to just home gym lifts but you know I'm just saying if you've ever got some kind of something or other your car breaks down you can't get to the gym being able to work around this kind of stuff is gonna put you ahead of the game it's gonna put you ahead of the curve I think there's a pretty fucking large well large majority I guess that's kind of redundant I think there's a majority or at least a large percentage of, uh, let's just say, lifters out in the world who Thanksgiving, Christmas, their birthday, New Year's, 
any holiday where, you know, typically you get the day off, people get work off, that's just a cue. Oh, no gym for me today. Time to rest. I just, I don't know, man. I just don't, I, I can't really wrap my head around that. If anything, I'm a little bit more excited for holidays like that just because I don't have to deal with any other shit. I just get to focus on the lift. But I guess that's coming from the perspective of someone who has potentially an unhealthy obsession. But as far as I can tell, it's uh, it's just an upward spiral. Right? I'm like, uh, it's like there's a magnetic force beyond me, which is just compelling me to try to get the craziest pump possible every day. Combined with if I'm bulking, you know, as many calories as I can get in my system, or if I'm cutting down, you know, backing off, no treats. So, yeah, that's worth discussing. What's the point? What is the point of bulking and cutting? Why do I do it? Uh, what's the point of bulking up if you're just going to cut down? If you're not going to do a bodybuilding show, then why are you dieting in the first place? I don't understand. What... I mean, valid point. I've, I've kind of cleared this up before, but it's, uh, it's worth bringing up again. So, my main overarching goal is, over time, I want to have more and more lean, contractile tissue, more muscle on my frame. Right? I want to get bigger. So, for me, the sort of approach that I like is a couple months of a hard bulk... You know, I mean, eating treats, fast food, not all my food comes from there, of course, because I do want quality sources of protein, right? I re I'm really trying to bias a lot of red meat, a lot of eggs, milk, uh, not really a ton of fish. I mean, nothing wrong with it. I mean, I'll eat a ton of, uh, like, tilapia if it's around, or if, like, my mom got some kind of food or something and it's like leftover, I just don't really go for it, usually, but, yeah, I want to really bulk up to the point where, like, I want to be putting on some body fat, just because that's going to kind of indicate to me that I'm actually bulking hard enough, now, don't take that as, okay, if Sam said that, then I should also get, like, I should try to get as fat as possible on the bulk, no, if I really started putting on a lot of body fat, then I would tone back on the treats, I tone back on the surplus a little bit. You know, I don't want to get absolutely crazy soft, but putting on a little bit of body fat as well as, you know, some muscle in a bulk, it's just kind of part of the game which you got to deal with. And then after so long of bulking, you know, I'll pretty much reach a point of plateaudness, which I just can't break past. And that ends up being a little bit of a cue for me to say, okay. I think I've bulked for long enough, and then also by the time I'm at that point, I am just fucking tired of eating too, like it's, it is no fun to get all this food down. So that's my cue, I gotta hit the brakes, and then reset. So that's when I jump straight to my deficit, you know, two and a half, three thousand calories for about two-ish months, and that small cut serves two purposes. For one thing, it's gonna let me peel off some body fat, right? So, of course, I'll you know, look a little bit crazier, but that's not the real point. To lose that excess body fat that I gained over the bulk just kind of gives me a little bit of a buffer. So now, when I bulk again after the cut, I'm not just going to keep getting softer and softer and softer, right? But apart from the visual effects that the, you know, let's just call it the mini cut is going to have, right? It's also going to reset my appetite, you know, my insulin sensitivity, my uh, metabolism, all sorts of shit like that. So the first two weeks of the cut, or the first week, I mean, I am not fucking hungry for anything. You know, I feel like my body's in a state where it's like, dude, you do not need to eat more food. So, I mean, I'll get to like 1,500 calories, and I'm like, oh, I guess I should eat a little more. It's like 6 o'clock at night. But after that first week... I'll start to get a little hungrier, hungrier, hungrier. And at the end of the cut, by the time it's, uh, you know, week eight or nine or so, I will be, I mean, 
we just saw it in this last cut, significantly leaner than the beginning of the cut, right? The end of the bulk. And, you know, I'm hungry. I want some fucking food in my system. So now I'm, I've gone from at the end of the bulk being soft, holding a good amount of body fat and not wanting to eat any fucking food, like totally over it. To now, at the end of that two month cut, I've lost the body fat, or at least the excess body fat, and, you know, I'm hungry, right? I want to fucking chat out on everything I can get my hands on. So that's kind of the routine. And then, at the end, so at the beginning of the bulk, I weigh X, let's just say 200 pounds. At the end of the bulk, let's say I got up huge, 230. Then at the end of the cut, let's say I don't know, 210. But I'm just as lean as I was in the beginning. So that means over that whole little process, right, it's not just a yo-yo. I'm not just getting bulked up and then cut back down to the same weight. I do, but I'm heavier at the end of it than I was at the beginning. So right, repeat the process a couple times. Then every bulk and cut, I've got more muscle on my frame. That's been, uh, that's been my approach for the last uh, little longer than two years. And once I get to a point of, let's just call it satisfaction with my build, like once I'm kind of, I guess there's no other way to say it, big enough. I know that sounds crazy. That sounds crazy coming from my mouth. Big enough. Whoa, I don't know how that was possible. But, you know, let's say I get to X size and I'm like, all right, this is cool. Then I'm not going to be so concerned with actual, like, bulking and cutting. I'll really just kind of maintain that build. Because, you know, in terms of uh, bodybuilding, right, you do develop size. Of course, you know, I do want to be bigger. But let's say I get to, let's say, 230 lean. I mean, like, pretty freaking lean. For me to keep on lifting, just over time, you know, I'll get to develop some muscle maturity. Everybody's heard that word thrown around. You know, some extra graininess, hardness. I mean, you develop not only in size, but also, fuck man, I also, I want to say even like texture. Quads and triceps especially come to mind. Because once you've developed them enough, you kind of get this feathering effect where you get these sort of cross striations. I mean, just fucking sick. And then of course, the longer you lift, that stuff will kind of get more and more solidified. So just a ton of shit for me to look forward to in the future. But now I'm just driving around for no reason. I gotta pull up to Planet Fitness, get drenched, and uh, we can just cut to the basement and see what I want to start chest day off with. <laughs> It has been a while since we've ventured down to the dungeon, but fuck, man. I want to say countless, obviously not countless, but there's been a fucking ton of lifts down here, especially COVID year when, I mean, everything was just fucking done. But, you know, having a home gym is coming clutch. I mean, yeesh, fucking, let's just break down some scenarios when I've had to come here instead of the real gym. Uh, holidays today, winter storms. There was one really big one. I think it was either last winter or the one before. <sighs> Me and my brother, we drove to the Y. I don't know how anybody was working there. I mean, all the roads were completely slicked over with ice. But we managed to get there going like, I don't know, 10 miles an hour. But you're sick, you know, maybe let's say... Uh, you know, you can't lift until 11 at night and your gym closes at 10. You know, having a home gym fucking, it'll save you. It will freaking save you from taking an unnecessary rest day. But, I mean, the start for chest is going to be the same as normal. I'm going to sit here, kind of warm up my triceps a little bit. Then I'll do a little bit of a, well, I really kind of end up doing a little bit of a circuit with the, uh, with the cable. So, a couple of push downs, and then I'll kind of do some face pulley sort of, well, single arm face pulls, just kind of warm up my rear delts, little rotator cuff, 
and then I'll just do some cable presses for a little bit of a chest warm up. Of course, I'm still going to do, you know, one plate, two plates. Actually, fuck, I don't have two plates. It's really going to go one plate, a 35, a 25, some 10s. I mean, this is a little bit of a hodgepodge of weight. But I'll still work up to whatever my top set ends up being. And then I really think the incline bench is going to be the main movement of the lift. I'll do some dumbbell stuff at the end, probably. Well, I, I don't know. Maybe I'll even do some superset style reps of like dumbbell flies as a pre-exhaust and then do really light incline. I'll have to see, but I can say with certainty the first few sets are just going to be incline barbell. So let's cut to uh, let's cut to that first working set when I've actually thrown the thrown this whole little setup together. I gotta I gotta move all sorts of shit. <laughs> okay, so I've done a plate. I've done a plate in a thirty-five. So that makes this two fifty. Let's see how this looks. Now, in terms of safeties, I just put these extra pins right here so I can, you know, just rack it if I fail one. Hmm. Well, let's move up. You know, maybe not of the weight itself. But I know Bugenhagen would be proud of this fucking setup. So I, I think, dude, I only have 350 pounds. So I guess the top set isn't going to be decided by my strength. We'll just do this last warm up and then throw 350 around. <clears throat> All right, so if you have access to a little broski, to a little Bohemian Rhapsody, you get a little spot on the heavy set. So let's, uh, let's throw this around for hopefully 100 reps. Here, you put this on. Come on. Let's go. Come on. Duh. Come on. Come on. All right, help a little on this one. All right. Come on. Oh, Good. badass man! <laughs> Jesus, right. I think I only need the spot on one. All right, cool. Oh. So we've got Thanksgiving dinner in like thirty minutes. I gotta finish this shit up quick. <laughs> All right, preach. All right, so set number one, three fifty. Set number two, drop it to three hundred. I can already feel. I mean, we're getting, just after one good set, I can already feel a pump forming. So let's just make sure to throw this around. Now with this weight, I am comfortable enough not to need a spot. And even if I do feel pretty strong, usually I like getting a spot on that first heavy set, kind of just because you never know. But once I know I feel pretty good, I know I can manhandle this weight back onto the uh, those little safeties. Let's throw this shit around. Ugh! <sighs> 
Oh, that last rep was a good grinder. I took my butt off the seat just a little bit, though, so I don't care about, you know, competition legal reps anyway. But fuck. Eh. One more. The same weight. I think that's enough heavy pressing. Let's um let's let's figure out some kind of drop set. This would usually be the portion of the lift where I want to do some cables or cable flies or pec deck, but since I don't have those here, I gotta be a little more creative. Alright, game plan. Do some kind of cross body dumbbell flies, which I'll explain in a moment and then burn out with 200 on the incline. So basic premise, I mean, I'm grabbing onto a dumbbell, swing it right over top of my quads, and I'm just flexing my pec and pulling the weight towards my opposite hip. That's the movement path. And then obviously I'm not really working my pecs in a, um, a stretched position, but I mean, apart from just normal cable press, this is up there with one of the movements which I can squeeze my pecs the hardest. I mean, I almost feel like they're turning into stone when I'm at this top part. Like they're just fucking... <sighs> no other way to describe it than that. But one or two of these and then I think we might be done. <clears throat> Two hundred was fucking way too light. I gotta make this heavier for the next one. But I do like that little super set. Ooh. Oh yeah. Let's just do one more and then check the pump, man. No. <sighs> Oh, 
Oh my goodness. Oh. Let's take a breather and then check and discuss that fucking pump. Oh my goodness. Even though I pretty much only did five sets of bench, a little bit of a super set at the end, this pump feels as good as ever. Let's fucking check it out. All right, the lighting is a little funky. I may have to fix that in post, but this pump is, well, let's just take a fucking look at it. Let's just take a freaking look. So that was what? I mean, three sets of hard incline, no drop sets, no nothing special. Then two sets more of incline, much lighter, pre-exhausting with something else. Doesn't seem that game changing of a routine to me, but it definitely gave me some kind of fucking, you know, swelling sensation, AKA the pump, as much as any other fancy chest day I've ever done. But don't let me just talk about it. Let's, let's actually see what it looks like. <clears throat> There have been a lot of lifts in this fucking basement. And that is just one more under the... Dude, ah, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. Dude. This is... <laughs> the fucking roundness all over. <laughs> oh my goodness. I'm a... That is very nice. That's one thing I like about being bulked. You just get so fucking bulbous. <sighs> I've got no problem putting on some extra body fat in exchange for just, you know, unadulterated mass. <sighs> See, what other poses are there? Oh, very fucking nice, man. Yeesh. So as many lifts as I've done, as many fucking pumps as I've gotten that I've recorded, you know, and fucking sh shown off, there's four times as many that I've just done totally on my own. So yeah. I feel like I was going to go somewhere with that, but... I just lost my complete fucking train of thought. So I'm going to go chow down on some turkey, mashed potatoes, deviled eggs, all sorts of other treats. And let's just cut to tomorrow's cardio to give you a little bit of a, a little bit more of a car talk. But badass lift, badass pump, nothing else to say. So... I guess for you, it's going to be one moment, but I'll see you tomorrow when I head to the gym to get cardio going. All right, so got to be honest, I did not do my morning cardio today, but that's just out of technicality because I did my cardio in the afternoon because I slept my ass in. I, uh, I actually got here when the sun was up, but you know post lift chatting turned into you know a quick little trip to the gym it turned that into a uh, a little bit of an excursion but even now the day after i can still fucking kind of feel my pecs burning just a little bit or maybe not burning per se but i can i can tell that they were worked hard yesterday that's uh that's really what i'm going for there which I'm not going to say that being sore after your lift or like soreness is an indicator of like effectiveness, but it's, it's, it's gotta be indicating something that I would not say lack of sleep because I got a good ass night's rest last night. Now that I'm on the bulk again, I've been having the craziest dreams. I think just from having, you know, well, obviously having excess calories, having a surplus of calories. This is kind of my own little observation of the situation, but having so much food coming into my system, 
I feel like it just gives my brain more energy to, like, well, fucking dream when I'm sleeping. Because when I'm dieting down and I go to sleep, you know, pretty much without fail, it's always just like I shut my eyes and then boom, I'm up. But bulking, I always get the craziest dreams, which it's kind of cool. I mean, let's see sort of, uh, I don't know. I feel like if you're into, you know, dream journaling and whatever, stuff like that, you could potentially look at it to like, you know, see what's been stressing you out in your day-to-day -day life. And then you can kind of analyze that through your dreams. But I think I've kind of spoiled myself because now all that happens is when I dream, it's just a combination of the things that I do or am going to do the next day plus like whatever show or video or like game that I was playing. I mean, I've had fucking countless dreams just in Verdansk or uh, in like the Breaking Bad lab, just like random shit like that. But enough dream speak. 30 minutes of cardio under the belt. Now I'm going to go home for a couple of hours, get some food in me. I'm going to have to stop at Meyer to get some steaks. I uh, ran out of red meat in the house. Big freaking no-no. I mean, I'm not going to say just eggs and Thanksgiving turkey isn't going to do the trick. High quality sources of protein. But I've really been on a, I've really been kind of prioritizing some red meat, you know, by the pound to, uh, to fill up my 250 gram need every day of, uh, and that's, that's protein, not 250 grams of you know, just a steak. But other than that, I mean, tonight, which for you, I'm saying this like the day of. So if you're watching this, I'm saying this little speech like two hours ago, at least if you're, you know, one of the fresh viewers. But yeah, I'm going to come, I'm going to end up coming back to this gym for back, which, well, actually, I don't know. I might go to Planet Fitness. I guess you're just going to have to see tomorrow. But either way, I'll be able to get a good lift. Though I am kind of leaning towards the Planet Fitness because they have legit cable pull downs and cable rows. I can get a, uh, well, I can get a really good workout in at the Y just with, you know, a normal cable stack and doing single arm pull downs and some machine rows and, you know, pullovers, everything else like that. I can still get a good workout. But, I mean, I kind of want to do the basic building blocks of my back. That seated cable row and the lat pull downs, if my back days were only limited to two movements, those would be the two that I would pick. Just because you know, I feel like those two in combination just hit your whole back, you know? I mean, I'm going to get all my lats going with the pull downs. I would say kind of biasing lower lats too, but no traps or anything like that. And then doing the rows, of course, I'm still going to get lat activation. I'm still flexing and stretching my lats, but I get way more trap mid-back activation. So when I talk about my lifts and how they should hit, you know, let's, uh, let's just call it a basic framework and not necessarily you know, specific exercise selections and things like that. Like the chest day that I just finished, or, well, for you it seems like it just finished. For me it happened yesterday. I wanted to fill out two, let's just call them uh, scenarios. Heavy pressing, those three sets of incline bench, and then lighter squeezing movements, which those two supersetted sets I feel accomplished. That, uh, that first set was a little bit too light that ended up just being kind of a burnout set. That second one was a much better weight. And I could really feel like I was like, working all the way up to that last point before my arms got straightened out, before that last rep of uh, whatever that ended up being. I think it was like 250 or whatever. But that was the basic framework. Something heavy, followed by maybe a little bit lighter squeezing kind of set. And with back, my framework is still, it's usually it start off with something heavy, but sometimes it'll start off with lighter squeezing sets too. 
So a more accurate depiction, I guess, would just be you know, some rowing movements, some pulling down movements, you know, some lat bias pull downs, and then back to rows. You know, or maybe I'll do a little more rows one day or a little more pull downs one day. It's it's just kind of prone to fluctuation. I don't end up doing a lat biased back day or like an upper back biased back day, but that's just out of convention because in my mind it feels like whenever I hit back, you know, if I get a whole back pump, you know, if I'm only doing four sets really lat biased and then four sets really mid upper back biased, like four sets of pull downs, four sets of rows, and I feel like I got a pretty solid back pump all around, then, you know, not only do I think that's been enough to stimulate some back growth, I've literally seen it grow my back. But that doesn't mean that I don't think a lat bias day or an upper back bias day aren't beneficial. Honestly, now that I'm thinking about it, the fact that I haven't done, you know, a bias day for either one, I don't know. Because it's, this question has come up, and I've thought about it before, but the logic is with chest, right? I've been doing, what, five sets, and then calling it with legs, you know, quads, four or five sets, hamstrings, five sets, whatever. But with shoulders, you know, when I would do shoulders, I split it up into the two muscle groups that I want to hit in the shoulder, right? Because there's side delts, and then there's rear delts. So even though when you do a side lateral, you might get a little bit of side delt activation, you're still really just doing side delts. So following that logic, I do side delts individually, and then I move on to rear delts. So that logic would make me want to think that I should hit lats, you know, directly. Just do four or five sets of like lat biased movements, lat pull downs, Single arm lat pull downs, pull overs, uh, you know, rows where I really just try to pull downward with my elbow close to my body to really just squeeze my lats. And then once I feel like my lats are fully pumped, move on to upper back and like focus on kind of more incline ish shrugs and rows and whatever else. So that is definitely on my mind when it comes to my back training. But you can think over all sorts of hypotheticals in your brain of like what kind of training would be best or like, oh, maybe I should start chest with pec flies just to pre-exhaust and then start pressing out or just, you know, you can run through all sorts of little workout scenarios in your mind, but they're not going to do you any good if you don't actually get in the gym, go hard and you know, see what happens. So as much as I talk about like, oh, so this might be a good way to go about it. At the end of the day, I mean, it's just, I mean, to an extent, it, I am just kind of talking. You know, I'm just yapping. If I go into the gym and every back day was just three sets of crazy pull downs and three sets of really heavy, hard, intense rows and leave, over time, you know, I couple that with a 5,000 calorie diet for, you know, months on end for the bulk. I mean, guess what? I'm going to freaking grow. So try not to nitpick too much. And really make sure that the, at the forefront of your mind, what you're focusing on making sure you actually bring to the table is you know, being able to go hard. I mean, it kind of upsets me if I see somebody do a set and then you know that they had like fucking five or six legit reps, which they're just not going for. Now, I'm not everybody's dad, so... It's not like I'm going to go up to him and say, dude, you had five more. But that's just kind of something I end up noticing. There we go. But apart from that, that was a solid chest day. Even though I was, you know, relegated to the basement with not minimal equipment. You know, a lot of people don't have, I mean, like the minority of people, or at least you guys, I doubt you got a rack floating around. So maybe you got some dumbbells, but in that sense, I am a little bit lucky to have that in the basement. But yeah, even with just the rack and the dumbbells, that was a solid chest day. You know, 
I think I could still build a pretty gnarly physique. A pretty gnarly, well, build just in that basement alone. Now, I said this before, legs might be a little tricky just because no leg extension, no leg curl. But everything else, you know, I've got everything in there that I need. Triceps, I can do push downs, overhead extensions with the dumbbells, buys, I can do curls, barbell, dumbbell, preacher off the top of the bench on an incline. Uh, back, I can do single arm pull downs, I can do pull ups, potentially weighted if I feel the need. I can do bent over rows with the barbell, lighter rows with the dumbbells, uh, shoulders, side lateral shoulder press, bent over, rear delt flies. You know, it can all be done. To, uh, I don't think anybody really hates on home gyms like that, but you know, when you kind of throw shit or throw shade at like Planet Fitness, you're like, oh, just nobody can just, <laughs> just by saying that, like just the sentiment of you thinking, you can't get big here. You, ha you can only get big here doing this. <laughs> just by saying that, you know, you're just solidifying in your own mind constraints on yourself, right? If all I had at my fucking disposal was, I mean, I don't even fucking know. Let's just say a uh, 50, pound, 50 pound bag of potatoes. I think I could still try to get a solid workout in, right? Maybe put a belt around them and do rows like that. or do I mean, just if you've got the mentality to be able to think, okay, I got to do, I got to whatever, you can make it happen, you know? Not that, you know, I'm prescribing a uh, potato workout, but I'm just kind of saying. So. Yeah, what else is there to fucking discuss? I mean, pretty much nothing. Cardio done. I'm going to go get some food. Come home, sleep after the gym, and then just repeat. The, uh, when it comes to talking about going to the gym and, you know, doing your lifts or whatever, and... You know, people talk about it as though it's such a grind. Like, you you got to be... Even when you feel like shit, you got to go in. You know, I don't necessarily... I mean, you know, if I listen to that kind of little TikTok edit of some dudes talking like that, it'll still hype me up. But, you know, that's not how my mentality is just in day-to-day -day life, you know. Uh, if, for whatever reason... Uh, the idea of going into the gym every every day is a grind, it is a struggle for you, then it would make sense that you should try to make it easier on yourself, right? Now, you're still going to go in, you're still going to do a legit workout, but the difference between someone who has never worked out before and let's say they get taken through a hard lift and they're pushing themselves, there's, you know, they just, they're not comfortable doing it. So a, a guy who has never been in the gym before could come in and push himself 100% of what he's capable of. And he's going to get tired. He's going to go, oh, God, this is uncomfortable. Oh. You know, but a dude who's been lifting for three years, by the time he's had that much fucking experience, you know, now he's used to it. And by then, he should like it. You know, So it's like, a, I don't know. I think what I'm trying to say is it's like an ice bath. You know, If you jump into it, and you're like, oh, I hate this, oh, this sucks. Oh. Then it's gonna feel like you're in there forever or you might not even get in. But if you're comfortable with it, then it won't even feel like a challenge. If you sort of, he can kind of understand what I'm getting at, you know, like just either by exposure or I don't know, man. If you can get comfortable with setting aside a particular amount of time every day to go into the gym, do your little workout, go home, eat your food, you know, maybe throw some cardio in the mix. I don't wanna I don't wanna scare you by telling you you gotta do it, but just think about it. You know, if you can be comfortable with that day in and day out routine, then it won't even be a question of whether or not you're gonna make gains in progress. It just ends up being a, a time issue. It just ends up being a, uh, like, all right, well, I'm going to keep doing this for a couple years, and I know for a fact I'm going to get big at the end of it. Right? Like, I don't know. 
it's, I don't know if you can really relate to how I'm trying to say this. It's just, if you can make going to the gym just part of your routine, like day-to-day -day normal life, it's not even a thought of like, oh crap, I don't want to go in there. If you can become comfortable, then it won't be difficult, you know? And if something's not hard for you to do, then it won't take discipline for you to do it. You get what I'm saying? You wouldn't have to tell a dude to play four hours of Fortnite straight because he wants to do it and he likes doing it, right? So take with that what you will if you can fucking take anything at all. I think there's a little bit of a good point in there. But I'm going to go get myself, get my hands on some ribeyes, some ramen, some chocolate milk, and... I don't know. Probably some other kind of treat. Probably some other sort of treats. Maybe I'll stop by the uh, the bakery. But that's all I got, man. So I'll fucking see you next time. <laughs>